Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Hurt people hurt people. Meet anger with sympathy, contempt with compassion, and cruelty with kindness. Greet grimaces with smiles. Forgive and forget about finding fault. Love is the weapon of the future. Today on our space, we break that chain. Our first OP is looking for their new travel companion. I feel like I'm forcing the divorce. First time making a full post. Mostly been comment replies. For context, I found out my 42 male wife, 44 female, had been cheating on me with an old college flame, her forbidden fruit, as she said, for six months, August of 21 through February of 22, nearly four months ago, and it devastated me. We have been married for almost 17 years, October, and we have three kids, 16 male, 15 male, 13 female, a home, pets, everything. She had been sexing him, Mike, for six months, and in all honesty, I think they met up at some point to hammer it out. But she completely denies this. The level of sexting via the LinkedIn messaging app that was taking place was straight out of a porno and extremely explicit. They exchanged videos of each of them masturbating. You get the idea. I took photos and have full evidence of it all. Once I went into sleuth mode, I realized that she had been chatting with other men online, one from Germany, we live in the US, from 2020, and another from her hometown since 2011. There were a bunch of deleted messages between them on Facebook Messenger, so I know something went down that she had to hide. Unsure if that was just an emotional affair or something bigger, I have no way of knowing. We are now almost four months out with the divorce papers, being prepped now by my attorney. I have tried and tried to get her to see the light of our marriage and how much we were in love, but it was mainly how I was in love. She just wouldn't budge on getting counseling, zero remorse, and it took her forever to say she was truly sorry. Meanwhile, I've been in therapy for nearly three months, reading books and trying to understand where I went wrong. I finally was recommended the book, Leave a Cheater, Gain a Life, and it changed how I saw everything and it helped to put me back on track for divorce. I guess I need to read it again. We've had some serious conversations in the last few weeks about divorce and have agreed to split everything amicably down the middle and to try and be friends at the end of all of this since, hey, we'll be in each other's lives for quite a while. She's beginning to see the light of how much I was actually doing and holding the family together for the last 10 plus years. I was the one that always worked. She was a stay at home mom, which was 100% her choice. We had always made plans that she wanted to get a job once the kids went to school. But that was about eight years ago, and she just now got a job three weeks after D-Day. Her claim is that she never wanted this lifestyle, being the stay-at-home mom she turned into. I'm starting to wonder if this was an exit affair. I asked her this last Sunday if she even wanted to be married, and she instantly replied with zero hesitation, No, not right now. The hardest part about all of this is that she is completely non-emotional about it all. She said she used to sit at home while I was at work and cry to herself about where she was and how she was living. Understand that we live in a great neighborhood, 3,000 square foot home, pool, two nice cars, etc. It's not like we've had a crappy life. She never said anything to me about it. When asked, why not? She just said, I don't know. I hate divorce. Some because of religious reasons, and mainly because I have always wanted a family with kids, pets, and a woman that loved me. I've realized over these past few months that I've given up a lot of myself and have become seriously codependent on our relationship, which sucks big time. It's something I'll be talking to my therapist about next week. Now that the divorce is coming along, I can't help but feel I'm forcing it. She said she doesn't want to be married, but is it because of me? Is it because of me pushing her away? I didn't realize I had or was her claim. Maybe if I wasn't so codependent on her, then maybe she'd still want me? All these stupid questions keep coming to mind. Her being so okay with moving on just doesn't seem right after 17 years and a huge life together. It feels like there's a way more to the story, or maybe she's just so far gone from the relationship that she's essentially already gone completely. I don't know. I guess I just need some advice and maybe some perspective on things. Edit. Thank you all so much for your advice and perspective on everything. I am doing so much better than I was at the start of the day. Having people that have gone through this, which sucks that we are all part of this club, and the advice from their experiences has helped tremendously. I cannot thank you all enough. Update. Almost five months since D-Day and I'm starting to mentally get there. I posted here, mostly replies, but I did have one main post that detailed everything out. I feel like I'm forcing divorce. That I posted about one to two months ago. Since then, I, 42 male, 
have served my soon-to-be ex-wife, 44 female, in the beginning of June, and it's been a hell of a hard thing to do, but I had to. For context, October is 17 years married, three kids, 16 male, 15 male, 13 female, and always thought I'd have the amazing life, wife, that I always dreamed of when I was younger. That all blew up in February of 2022. So here I am on my birthday in another country, from AZ US, on a two week work trip to Europe, and it has seriously helped me in number one, getting away from her for two solid weeks with a bonus of no contact and only texting calling the kids, and number two, a chance to reflect on what I've been missing throughout my last 17 years with her. I've been able to mentally make a list of what I want in my next relationship and qualities in someone that I will eventually someday meet. I love to travel and my amazing company is 100% cool with me bringing along my spouse to trips all over the world. In fact, when I signed on with this company a few years ago, one of the major perks I was looking forward to was traveling with her. She would have been able to go on this amazing EU trip with me, but she screwed that up for herself. And I made sure to remind her before I left by saying, if that crap hadn't blown up, I would have loved to have you go with me to Europe. It's going to be amazing. She stumbled her thoughts for a few minutes and then began to come up with reasons why she wouldn't like it. Eye roll, whatever. When this is all over and I'm finally divorced and I have someone that actually wants to be with me, they will have an amazing man that will love them to the ends of the earth. I'll finally have someone that I can share my life with that actually wants to be there and actually wants to have a good time. Sorry for the wall of text, but I just wanted to reflect on a few things that have been going through in my head over the past week during my break of her. The best part is, I still have a week to go and I'll be hitting Prague via train through a few different countries. Going to EU on my birthday has seriously been crazy therapeutic for me in so many ways. P.S. Europeans, you have a beautiful country here. Can't wait to see more of it. Our first reaction from the community comes from Belf17. Being happy is the best revenge, and I like the pettiness of saying she could have come to Europe if she didn't F it up. Glad you moved on. One more comment from Harold the Trash Panda. Live your best life, diamond hands. Hope the kids are adjusting as well. Hope the ex is full of regret and remorse. Reality hitting her yet? The kids have to be old enough to resent her a bit. First of all, OP, you did the right thing. Better to be divorced and moving forward as your best self than in an unhappy marriage and forcing a marriage that isn't on a strong foundation based on love, trust, and peace. Your ex obviously hasn't been happy for quite some time and she didn't communicate that with you. Her being unhappy isn't a reason to do what she did to you. You've set yourself up for a great future and you're making room for someone to share that with. At the same time, your ex is able to discover herself and find a sense of purpose that she felt was lost at some point. She should have communicated openly with you throughout the years. That being said, it is easy to lose ourselves in relationships. Moreover, making a list of what you want out of your next relationship is brilliant. Make sure to also ask yourself what you want out of life. We can't find happiness in someone else. We have to first find happiness with ourselves. What are your thoughts? Our next OP is seeking retaliation. I want to do what he did to me. Sorry for the rant. It's been five months since D-Day. I was six weeks pregnant. Since then, I found out that he fell in love with her though he admits it's likely infatuation and is finally in therapy. It was only going on for a month and a half or so, and at first he blamed me. My insecurity and jealousy in his friendships with girls over the years made it so he couldn't have female friends and she had slowly became one of his best friends, a soulmate, a deep connection. All the issues in our relationship that he never actually told me about came to a head and he thought, well, if she thinks I'm going to cheat, I might as well. I never thought he'd cheat, but my insecurity did make me annoying. I'll give him that. He admits that he realizes now he never accepted or gave me the love I deserved and gave him that I was the kindest and most thoughtful person and he can't understand how he could betray and hurt me like this. How he looks back and doesn't recognize the person that did the things he did. How he's so grateful I didn't immediately divorce him. He wants to have our happy family. He was my best friend, known him for 20 years now. He cut off contact cold turkey even though I know it hurts him to lose what became such a good friend and is focusing on us. I want that happy family too, but I'm so torn. It seems so unfair. I want to go and fall in love with someone, get physical and have the overwhelming butterflies of a first kiss, an illicit one at that. I want him to think that while things aren't perfect, it's probably just a temporary rough patch because by low key COVID depression and infertility treatments like I did. I want him to feel secure, then I want to rip it all away from him. 
I want him to know exactly the long-term pain and suffering and PTSD that comes from having your entire worldview destroyed in a moment. I want him to hurt this way. I know it's not healthy, and I'm not actually encouraging vengeful acts. I don't think I could if I tried anyway. I'm in therapy and all that. Just thought someone else out there might have these invasive and sometimes satisfying thoughts too. ETA, thanks for all your feedback, the support and the tough love. I definitely have a lot of feedback to consider. I didn't expect to get a lot of feedback and I should have taken a step away. I didn't realize the toll it would take on my mental health. Going to delete this throwaway for now and go back to lurking. Thank you again, everyone. Let's check in with some of that advice. First from Mrs. Jingles 0729. However you feel and whatever you want to do is totally normal and okay. I've seen some people will go on an expensive vacation to a dream destination with a friend or friends that their cheater pays for as a way to give them some happiness that they got during their affair to make it even. I have no clue if that works, but I'd take the vacation and try it. Get tested. Putting your health at risk and your baby's health at risk is really cruel. If you stay, get a postnuptial so next time separation and divorce are going to be in your favor. Look up the five stages of grief and work your way through them. You'll never be able to unsee who he is now. You'll never get the same feelings of trust, safety, and security. Relationships take effort and it will always be easier to start something new, only fun. Then put effort into the existing relationship with bills and kids and responsibilities. You'll never unsee that lazy, low effort, lying, cheating, selfish, manipulative, gaslighting coward. It's also really crappy that he causes you to doubt him. Always follow your gut and he blames you for being insecure. Grass grows where it's watered. While he was showering this time, energy and affection on another woman, that relationship blossomed while yours died. This has zero to do with you. Don't listen to his words anymore. Meaningless to liars. Only watch his actions. How is he going to make this up to you? What consequences will he face? What's his action plan to improve and not continue to be a failure as a man, husband, and father? Without these things, he'll do this again. The next thought comes from Bitchy Flower Pot. Oh my god, girl, are you me? Like, literally? I've been having the same effing thoughts lately. I gave my significant other everything I could, and they backstabbed me at the birth of our youngest. Even Satan must be scared of him. I'm drained of energy. I don't think I believe in love anymore. Part of me really wants to hurt him bad by doing the same, but I don't feel it's worth it. I'm just done with him. He reached out yesterday with a long apology. I blocked him. I think wanting to hurt someone like you did is natural, OP. It means you want them to understand how you're feeling. You want them to feel remorse. That being said, there were a lot of people silently struggling during COVID and it triggered a lot of different wounds that people have been carrying with them. I'm not saying that justifies your partner's behavior at all. It just might offer some insight as to their state of mind at the time. It's likely that your partner is going through something and just doesn't quite understand his own feelings or what's going on internally. Because of this, he might not even know how to tell you what's going on with himself fully. An option to further understand him and your relationship might also be to go to couples therapy. This doesn't have to be the end of your relationship. This is salvageable if you choose. A therapist will offer a safe place where both of you can be honest and vulnerable with each other in a safe place. Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, please let us know what you thought of today's content. Until next time.